Doflamingo did everything right. I mean, if you think about it, he was living Crocodile's dream in Dressrosa because everything Crocodile tried to do in Alabasta, he managed to actually do in Dressrosa. And really, those two actually have a lot of similarities if you think about it. I mean, they both had backup plans and contingency plans for their backup plans. And everything was ruined when a crackhead and his band of lunatics decided to get involved with a nation that they honestly had nothing to do with. And so that's what I want to talk about today. We're going to go through the events of Dress Rosa, but look at it through the eyes of the antagonist, Don Quixote do Flamingo. So follow me. You are Don Quixote do Flamingo. Now, admittedly, you are a pretty foul and underhanded individual. You've done a lot of messed up stuff all in the name of chasing the bag. You are all about that paper. Now, you are the king of Dress Rosa, and you are also the leader of a criminal organization, the most successful criminal organization in the entire One Piece world. You work directly under Kaido. So one day you're just chilling, sitting on your throne, and you get a phone call. You're like, what's up? This is Joker King of Dress Rosa. What's up? And the person on the other and said, hey, Doflamingo, your days are numbered. I got a crackhead with me and we're on our way to Dressrosa and we're going to beat you up. And you're like, what? Who is this? And that's when the caller identifies himself as Law. He explains that he has kidnapped the scientist that has been tasked with creating all of the smile devil fruits that you have been supplying to Kaido and says, if you don't want me to kill him, you need to meet me at Greenbit. But before you do that, I need you to do two other things, okay? I need you to renounce your title as King of Dressrosa and renounce your title as one of the seven warlords. You need to do both of those things and then meet me in Greenbit and then I will give you Caesar. Now you hear this and it frustrates you quite a bit. I mean, you are the strongest, richest, most dripping Trippiest king that Dressrosa has ever seen. You don't want to renounce that title, but you also don't want to go toe to toe with Kaido. So Law gives you that ultimatum and he hangs up the phone. And the more you think about it, the angrier you get. But it makes you angry enough that you come up with a plan. So the next day you call Law and you're like, you know what, Law? I will do it. You were right. I do not want the smoke with Kaido. I will quit being a warlord and I will quit being king of Dressrosa. Just meet me in Greenbit and I will take Caesar from you. So Law's kind of relieved, but Law doesn't know that you have got this whole plan just waiting for the straw hats. So you gather everybody around and you go over the plan. It's like, all right, guys, this is very important. Like, they're on their way to Dressrosa. I need one of you to go to the ship, take out any crewmates that are on the ship, and also destroy the Sunny, cut off their escape route. All right, I'm going to Greenbit, all right? I'm going to take care of Law and Caesar in one go, two birds with one stone. Now, before I go over the rest of the plan, I need to emphasize this very important thing that I need all of you to hear, understand, and repeat back to me, okay? Do not, under any circumstances, get into a 1v1 with any of these people, all right? I'm serious. If you see See one of the straw hats, call another of our crewmates, and then jump them, okay? I'm serious. I'm looking straight at you, Senor Pink, all right? I'm serious, okay? I don't care if you like the cut of someone's jib or they seem manly. Whatever nonsense that you've got in your head right now, ignore it, okay? If you encounter any straw hat, call me or anyone else and jump them. Do you understand, Senor Pink? Senor Pink's just like, there comes a time in every man's life where no 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 stop i see i'm gonna stop you right there okay i don't care about whatever nonsense whatever monologue you were about to say do not under any circumstances get into a 1v1 with any of these people these lunatics keep winning every fight that they're in because people are underestimating them but we're not going to do that we're going to come up with a plan and we're going to follow through with that plan until it's completely finished does everyone understand this you mean everybody but me right dofi because i think i could take on all the straw heads by myself no 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 pika okay see everyone's not listening already and it's starting to stress me out pika do not fight them, okay? None of them, 1v1, all right? I don't care how strong you are, just just don't risk it. There's no need to risk it. I'm just saying I'm, I'm your number one man and my, my devil fruit's pretty powerful. You know, Pika, I've been meaning to talk with you about that. Like, is your devil fruit power like just that you can turn into stone and make yourself bigger sometimes, okay? Because there's a guy in the Coliseum that can drape himself over people like a jacket and then he can use all of their abilities, okay? And he's like a, a D-tier fighter inside the Coliseum. A weird ability, but way more more interesting than whatever you've got going on. I don't think that's fair. I mean, I could, I could, I could do a lot of stuff with the stones and this stuff. It's just like I don't care. I don't care, Pika. I, I truly, I truly don't care. Okay, do not get into a one v one fight with them. Well, okay, well, yeah, but I can, I can go inside the stone and then, then, they, then they can't find me because I, I get really big. And then when they, when I get really big, you, you gotta find the real me in order to attack me. Okay, Pika, but that's not an issue for anyone who has observation hockey, which everyone does at this point in the story. Okay, so you're really not as untouchable as you think you are. I'm just I'm just trying to help you and stop a disaster from happening. Please trust me on this. 
do not get into a 1v1 with any of them, okay? Does everyone understand what I just said? And so that's when Treble chimes in. He's like, all right, well, Dofi, that's a great plan, but what do you plan on doing about this crackhead? I mean, he's the one that's been going around just fighting anybody that he sees. I mean, he's already beaten up a couple warlords at this point. I mean, are you gonna fight him in a 1v1? So you're just like, you know, Treble, I have all the confidence in the world that I could beat this crackhead in a fair fight. Um, but I'm not gonna do that because I have nothing to prove by fighting a crackhead. I, I think only an idiot would go out there, ruin his warlord status by trying to prove himself by fighting a crackhead. That's not me, that's not what I'm about, and I don't have to do it. I do, however, have a plan for how to get rid of that crackhead, though. And that's when you explain to Treble that you plan to use the Mara Mara no Me that you guys have found, which was Ace's old fruit, and use that as a prize in the Colosseum. You plan to lure Luffy into the Colosseum because he not only likes fighting, but that he can't just let that fruit in up in just a random person's hands. So you plan to on luring him into the Coliseum and trapping him there so that he's removed from all of the action going forward. Now on your way to Green Bit, you stop by your girl's house. Your girl is Viola, okay? You ask her to keep an eye on the Straw Hats with her Devil Fruit powers. Her Devil Fruit lets her keep an eye on everything that's happening in the island, and she's kind of uh, a baddie, okay? So you also ask her, hey, I'm pretty sure one of the Straw Hats is a pervert. Maybe, uh, I think he's like their number three fighter. I could maybe just distract him, like, you know, be just femme fatale him a little bit. I don't care. Just get him out of the way if you need to, okay? But mainly just keep an eye on all of them, okay? So you give her that mission. So you make your way to Green Bit. And on the way to Green Bit, you stop by the Coliseum. You just want to make sure that Luffy took the bait. And sure enough, you see that Luffy is there in a very poor disguise and an even more poor alias. You see that he is calling himself Lucy and he's wearing a fake mustache. You don't know what you're looking at. You are so flabbergasted by the audacity of this crackhead. I mean, he did not even try at all to hide who he is. Like, you he's still wearing wearing the straw hat. You don't even get mad at it. You're just like, you know what? Thank you for making this easier, you crackhead. I'm gonna go finish what I started. So you continue making your way to Greenbit. You arrive and discover Law and Caesar are there by themselves with no other straw hats around. You go, that's weird, but you know, I don't care. Because with you is Fujitora, an admiral in the Navy. And with his arrival signifies the truth of the situation, okay? Law realizes that you are definitely still a part of the Seven Warlords and that you are still the King of Dressrosa. The newspaper articles that were released that said that you are not a warlord or the king of Dressrosa was falsified, which is something that you could have only done because of your past as a celestial dragon. Law had no idea, so this kind of rocks his world because he didn't have enough strength to fight you, much less you and an admiral. So you guys just start whooping his ass right there on Green Bit. And the whole time you're trying to talk with him, you're just like, Law, I just, I don't understand why you decided to go this route. I mean, me and you, we could have been so good together. Like we could have been a family, you know what I'm saying? Like, why did you do this? And Law's just like, are you kidding? I would never join you not after everything that you've done and so you're just like God, are you still on about that fine i'm sorry i invaded a nation and manipulated its king into slaughtering a bunch of its loyal subjects and then afterwards installed myself as the king region until i was democratically elected by the people because i was the only one who could stop the bloodshed that i was causing and then after that i turned a bunch of the residents into toys so that i could use them as slave labor to fund my criminal organization and look law i was chasing the bag okay sacrifices had to be made Will you just get over it? And that's when Law's like, no, I don't care about any of that. I'm mad at you for what you did to Corazon. And so you hear this and you're just like, what? Corazon? Rosanante? He was snitching on me, Law. And when I caught him, he said he was going to keep snitching on me. Like he was a threat to business and all of our lives. Like I had no choice. What did you want me to do? And Law's just like, I don't know, but you didn't have to kill him. You're just like, Law, I don't know if you've thought about this for even half of a second, but listen, we run a criminal organization. Okay, so that means that all of the wealth that we have accumulated from our criminal activities, that goes away the second the government comes to know what we've been doing. Right, Fujitora? I hate you so much. See, there was no way we could have let that slide. Sometimes half measures just don't do the trick. I mean, haven't you ever seen The Godfather? And that's when Law's like, no, I've never seen The Godfather. Why would I? It's like a hundred years old. And you hear this and you're like, whoa, hey, everybody stop. Hang on, hang on a second. Wait, you, you've never seen The Godfather? Well, there's the problem. All right, well, I'll tell you what. After all this ass whooping is done, me and you, we're going to go back to the palace and we're going to watch The Godfather parts one and two. I really think that's going to clear this whole thing up for you. And so after that, Law takes off. He doesn't want to watch The Godfather, but you chase him and you manage to catch up with him right outside of the Coliseum. Now you catch him, you throw him down and you shoot him like six times right in front of the crackhead who's watching from behind the bars because like we've explained earlier, he can't leave the Coliseum. He's trapped in there. So he's helpless as you just shoot him. So he screams. He's like, Law, and you go relax. They're just rubber bullets. I'm not going to 
to end somebody's life before they've seen The Godfather. I'm not a monster. And so from there, all the punch fighting's done, all right? You kind of wash your hands of every situation you're not directly paying attention to. Some of your subordinates are not getting back to you, which kind of has you concerned, but you've got all of your objectives like right in front of you, okay? The crackhead is fighting in the Coliseum and he can't get out. You just saw him, so you know he's still there. Law is in custody, and you've got Caesar back. So you've got all your ducks in a row. Every main objective you have checked off. You're sure your idiot crew members probably made some mistakes along the way, but the main objective you managed to take care of. So you retire to the palace to continue watching the Coliseum fights and set up the Godfather so that Law can watch. And so now you're back at the palace and you're talking to Fujitora like, hey, good game, Fujitora. Couldn't have done it without you. So Fujitora's like, listen, wipe that smile off your face. Me and you, we're not friends. And the second I get the chance to hoe you, oh, I'm gonna hoe you. And so you're Doflamingo, you hear all that and you're just like, ooh, well, all right, Fujitora. But you know, I'd watch how I was talking to me if I were you. You know, I am still king of Dressrosa. I am still a warlord. I pretty sure I'm stronger than you, maybe not, but doesn't really matter because Law's Devil Fruit can make me immortal, okay? That might be something you didn't know about, but it doesn't matter. As soon as Law's done watching The Godfather, I'm gonna make him make me immortal, and then after that, I'm gonna go on to just keep making money, okay? Because that's what I'm here to do. So you can keep being a hater. I, I don't really care. I'm gonna go keep winning. And so you get back into the main room where the Coliseum fights are going on, and you're watching as this crackhead is still going over the fights. You notice that he's got blonde hair now, but you think, you know, whatever, I guess he got a Super Saiyan transformation. I, I don't care. He's still trapped inside the Coliseum. And you go over to Law, who's watching The Godfather, and you're like, okay, Law, so look there. That is Fredo, okay? Now that is Michael Corleone's brother, all right? He means well, but he is a threat to the entire criminal organization. And he ends up making a mistake that almost gets Michael killed and his entire family killed, okay? So Corazon is a lot like Fredo if Fredo literally held a gun and tried to shoot Michael, okay? So now do you get it? Do you understand why I had to do what I did? And Law is just sitting in the chair filled with rubber bullets and he replies, I don't know, I guess the, the dialogue is good. Can I get like a, a band-aid or something? I'm bleeding out. I'm not gonna help you, Law, because if I do, you're not gonna learn anything. So just sit there and finish watching The Godfather Part 2 and then after that, you're gonna make me immortal. So while all these things are happening, you're keeping an eye on the crackhead and Law is watching The Godfather. You look out into the stands of the Coliseum and you start noticing the toys in the audience. They are turning back into humans and you're kind of curiously watching like that is odd. I, I wonder what Sugar's doing. That shouldn't be happening. But it keeps happening. They are slowly turning back into humans. They're all crying, uh, hugging their family members as all of the memories return to them. And a lot of them, like uh, most of them, are screaming your name and swearing vengeance. And so you're just like, that, uh, that doesn't look good. Uh, but, I, you know, I'm sure there isn't some catastrophe that's happened that I'm unaware of. Like, I mean, I've, I've clearly won. I've got all three things that I want. There's no way that something this bizarre is happening this late in the game. And that's when Treble just kicks down the door and he's out of breath and he's just like, Oh, Dovey, Dovey, come quick. You gotta help. It's crazy down there. It's in the underground toy factory. Pinocchio turned into Jesus and he freed the slaves. What? And that's not all. You know the crackhead that's fighting in the Coliseum? Well, that's not really the crackhead. It's the crackhead's brother. And you're just like, I, okay, no, there's no way that it could be the crackhead's brother. The crackhead's brother lost his life in Marineford. You remember? That's the whole reason we have the Mara Mara no Mi in the first place. Treble's just like, no, no, not that brother. This is a different brother. This brother was presumed dead for a really long time, but he actually had amnesia. But he was picked up by the Revolutionary Army and trained with them for a really long time and managed to become their number two. And anyway, he just recently got over his amnesia and immediately came here to fight with his brother and start a coup in Dressrosa. What? And so you're listening to this bizarre story and then you hear someone screaming your name behind you. Do Flamingo! And you're just like, God, what now? And you turn around and there's this one-legged gladiator in midair ready to strike you down. You look up, you're flabbergasted. You're just like, I completely forgot about you. You know, in hindsight, Sugar's Devil Fruit Power is really a hindrance when used in this way and then you get your head cut off. Now, luckily, this was just a string clone that you made. You know, you thought a little bit ahead. You didn't know what the crackhead had cooking. But um, you certainly didn't expect Pinocchio Jesus to free the slaves, nor a one-legged gladiator to cut off your head. But luckily, you still put the string clones out, okay? So the real you is somewhere else trying to assess the situation, and it quickly becomes apparent that with all of the toy slaves now humans and trying to storm the castle to get their revenge on you, you realize, okay, this has gotten out of hand and it's time for the birdcage. Now, the birdcage is Doflamingo's final contingency plan, okay? Now, when activated, it's going to slowly close in on the city and just start 
start eradicating everything in its path, okay? So you think if everybody knows this truth about Dress Rosa, once the government finds out, you're going to go to jail. And, you know, you can't have that. So you figure better cut your losses and get rid of everybody on the island. So it's you in trouble at your palace, and you figure you better call your girl. Your girl has this really sweet devil fruit power, remember? She can keep an eye on the straw hats all across the island. So you hit her up, and you're like, Viola, oh, thank God I finally managed to reach you. Listen, I, I need a big favor. And she's like, what? Why do you... Why do you have an attitude? Like, it, does, it doesn't matter. A bunch of crazy stuff's happening, and I need your help. And she's just like, you know, I don't think I want to help you anymore, okay? You are actually a very bad person. And you're just like, I... Okay, but... Did you just realize that? I don't understand what's going on. And she's just like, you know, I've been spending a lot of time with the straw hat Sanji. And, you know, he's a real gentleman, okay? He knows how to treat a lady and he knows how to treat people. And it's made me realize that you are an awful person. And you're even more flabbergasted. Even more flabbergasted than the one-legged gladiator that cut off your head. You can't believe what she's saying in this moment. You're on the phone like, I, what is going on right now? Did you, Are you saying you got rizzed out by a pervert? You know I'm a king, right? What are you talking about? You might be a king, but you don't know anything about being a gentleman. Goodbye, Dofi. You know he stares at women bathing, right? I mean, he's not a, that good of a person either, Viola. He was about to leave his entire crew behind and he just met you like a couple minutes ago. How is that better than... Ah, ah she hung up. Oh, she hung up. Okay. Oh, I'm losing, I'm losing my mind. You know what? It doesn't matter. G give me that microphone. I, I think I have a perfect fix for all of this nonsense. So Treble hands you this microphone and you broadcast this message to the entirety of Dressrosa. You tell them that the birdcage is coming and the only way that they can stop it is if they bring you the heads of a couple people. And so you list off the people that you want dead. Among them, of course, is Captain Crackhead. Okay. It's the Crackhead's brother who's a part of the Revolutionary Army. All right. It is Law who managed to escape among all the confusion when you got your string clone's head cut off. And and then, of course, Pinocchio Jesus, who you are just really mad at because, for one thing, you're still confused as to how all of that happened, but you are convinced that if it didn't happen, you would still be winning this game that you have set up. So you know what? You give him the highest bounty. You were like, I don't care that much about any of these people, but find Pinocchio Jesus and bring him to me immediately. So you send that out and you're talking with trouble. Like, you know, I, I just don't know why today has went the way that it has gone, but I think that that took care of it, Trouble. I really think that we got it taken care of. And Trouble's like, yeah, you know, I would agree with you, but you should probably take a look outside this window. You look outside the window and the crackhead has mobilized every last fight inside the Colosseum and they are charging the palace ready to jump you. And so you're just like, you have got to be kidding me. They are rallying behind this crackhead. Why? He got here like a day ago and he's just a lunatic. What is it? Wait a minute. Is that my bull? Is he riding Bully Maguire? We have raised that bull for its entire life. How did he tame it in 20 minutes? You know what? That's it. I'm, I'm going down there. No, because everybody's just going to mess everything up. I got to take care of this myself. So you send one of your string clones down there to go introduce some subterfuge, some misdirection to try to prevent everybody from making it to the palace. And on the way, you end up encountering your pet bull, okay? It, it breaks your heart, but you know, you've seen the Godfather. You know that there was only one way this was going to go. So you walk up and you go, Bully Maguire, why? Ow, oh, Bully Maguire, don't make me do this bully mcguire but you have to do it so you stab bully mcguire okay you don't have the heart to wait around and see if bully mcguire has actually expired you just go back to the palace you're just so heartbroken you're ready to just get this over with okay you're just ready to get all the punch fighting done with so that you can close the bird cage and get out of here so you're waiting at the palace now you have managed to spread out the rest of your forces pretty well to where most of the angry mob that was coming to jump you has been deterred but the two that managed to actually make it to the palace are law and luffy you send one of your string clones to fight him and deter them a little bit more and then you also send bellamy after luffy okay so you think at least the crackhead is distracted okay i can handle law and so you're still really mad at law you two run the ones and you end up beating him up really bad you end up actually cutting his arm off you are just understandably upset at the way that this day has went and so while law is laying there with his arm cuts off he just starts crying he laments the tragic sequence of events that he has found himself in and you go listen law if you would have just finished watching the godfather part two you would understand this is the only way that this could have went so you ready the finishing blow so you're standing over him and right as you go to land the finishing blow the crackhead shows up and stops you the crackhead has gotten past your string clone and bellamy and he is ready to run the ones with you now at this point in the story you don't know that much about the crackhead except for the fact that he's easily distracted and easily fooled so you see him and you're just like well 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 if it isn't captain crackhead it's a shame he didn't bring your friend pinocchio jesus and luffy's just like i i don't know who that is can we fight now and he's just like listen i don't know that much about you okay but you seem like a lunatic and, and i like that 
that about you, okay? Just full disclosure, you seem like a guy I'd want to have a drink with. But wh why are you trying to do this to my nation? Why are you trying to fight me? Why are you siding with law? And Luffy's just like, I don't know, I think you made law mad or maybe you made his brother mad. I don't know, every time he tells a story, I just zone out. It's just so boring. And you're just like, I know, right? It's like all he talks about. Like, okay, I get it. You're mad, Jesus. But I don't even think he understands it because I keep trying to explain it to him. And it's like, okay, look, listen, if I could just paraphrase it to you. Like, have you ever seen The Godfather? And Luffy's like, like, yeah, of course I have. One of the best movies ever. And so you're just like, God, okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, so listen, I'm a lot like Michael Corleone. Okay, and I had a brother. And then Luffy's like, ah, Fredo. Fredo, okay, forgot. Okay, so you get it. And Luffy's just like, yeah, I mean, it's a tough position to be in, but that's people's livelihood. You can't mess with that. And you know, sometimes half measures just don't do the situation justice. You gotta go ahead and go the whole way. And you're just like, God, thank you. I've been trying to explain that to this one-armed idiot this entire time. Law, why haven't you been talking to this Captain Crackhead, okay? He seems like he gets it. I, just, I don't know. I guess maybe the acting is good in some areas. Can I, Look, can I please, please get a Band-Aid or a Gatorade? Just some some kind of aid. I'm, I'm having a hard time here. So that's when you keep talking to Luffy. You're like, all right, Straw Hat, here's the deal, okay? You let me get out of here and let the birdcage keep collapsing to take care of all of my loose ends, and I will pay you a lot of money. All of the money that those idiots just turned down. And that's when Luffy's like, yeah, I don't know about that. See, for one thing, Law promised that I would get the chance to fight you. And it's like, at this point, everybody's fought you but me. And I don't like that. I don't like how that feels. I feel, I'm feeling kind of blue balled. And then for another thing, this whole thing is just a stepping stone so that I get to fight Kaido. And that's when you pause because you, for the first time in the arc, realize that this crackhead is actually the most dangerous person here. You go, wait, wait, hang, hang on a second. You broke into my country, have dethroned me, and basically created this entire situation that's going to leave the island in shambles just so you can fight someone way stronger than me? Luffy's like, yeah, that's about the gist of it. About as much as I understand, at least. Uh, you can't believe it. You're just like, I don't know how this day happened this way. You know what? Never mind. Forget everything I just said. I better take care of you right now because you are just clearly the most insane person that has ever existed. I would do the world a favor to get rid of you. Let's just let's just fight. Let's get this over with. And so you and the crackheads start fighting. Now, remember, you are using a lot of energy to keep the birdcage up, okay? So a lot of your energy is to that but you're still managing to beat this crackhead so you start thinking to yourself like i don't know how this crackhead was causing so much problems and i don't know why i didn't just show up and beat this crackhead up in the first place and right as you think that as soon as the thought leaves your mind this crackhead says gear four and you go hang on a second hold on a second you are you about to transform and better question have you had that transformation this whole time, okay? This arc has been easily, at this point, like 150 episodes. You have had a transformation that can, and then steam starts coming out, you're just like, hey, he's got a transformation. Okay, you, you're insane. You are really a crazy person, dude. Like, this is ridiculous. You, why didn't you do that earlier? As soon as the transformation is over, he is just this ridiculously goofy, bouncing man. He calls it Gear 4 Bounce Man. You start laughing a little bit. You're just like, okay, I thought you were about to turn Super Saiyan or something. Like you had me scared, right? Okay, I thought it was gonna be something serious. And then before you can finish that sentence, this crackhead has punched you harder than you have ever been punched in your entire life. And it's at this point I think it's important to emphasize, you are Don Quixote do Flamingo. You've never lost a fight. Okay, you've never been challenged in any way because you're smart enough to know when it's worth getting into a fight in the first place. You've never been hit this hard and you've certainly never been hit this hard in the face. He sends you flying through several buildings. You're getting up out of the rubble. You're like, okay, well, hang on. It's what the, what was that? What is going on? And before you can catch your breath, this crackhead is on your ass. He is boxing you left and right, just flinging you around the map. You land right next to law. You get up. All right, seriously, time out law. What is happening right now? None of this makes sense. I'm getting my ass beat by a cartoon character. Law, is this your friend? Yeah, friend is crazy. You're making a lot of assumptions there. I basically met this guy like two years ago and didn't see him again until like last week. And from then on, it's kind of felt like I've just been held hostage. So you don't know what's going on either? You didn't know he could do this? I've never seen this before. I'm as confused as you are, okay? But I'm not in as much pain as you are. Or I might be, again, I still, I, I'm still bleeding out. So the crackhead keeps messing you up until finally, right before he delivers the finishing blow, he runs out of hockey, okay? The transformation ends and you just start thanking God. You're just like, oh God, finally. 
I can end this. There's no way I'm letting him do that again. I don't ever want to fight something like that ever again. So you walk over to the crackhead to land the finishing blow, and then a bunch of townspeople pick up the crackhead and run off into the night. You're just like, I come on guys, please don't be like that. Are you guys still mad about the whole birdcage thing? You guys have got to learn to let things go. So you're just pleading with everybody, trying to ask them to just show you Luffy. You're just trying to attack whoever you can at this point. You really, really want to end this fight, so you got to find Luffy. So you're looking for Luffy around the town, and you're wondering, like, I know the birdcage should be closed in, like, five minutes. Is this planet Namek? I know five minutes have happened. Why is the birdcage not closed? And so you turn around, and you see a bunch of high-powered swordsmen and other fighters using their powers to make sure that the birdcage does not close. And one of them is Fujitora. He turns around opens his eyes and winks at you. This blind bastard winks at you as he is thwarting your contingency plan. You fall to your knees. You're like, God, I I know I don't ask you for much, but please give me this crackhead. I, I just don't want to ever get into a serious fight ever again in my entire life. That was not fun. And I think he liked it. I think every time I beat him up, he was he got stronger. I'm scared. I don't want him to transform into that weird Looney Tune thing ever again. I'm scared he's got another form. He's crazy, God, please. And while you're praying this, your girl shows up. Viola shows up and just starts insulting you. You're just like, God, what more do you want from me, okay? Okay, don't you see I've lost it all? already my whole island is destroyed okay i'm no longer king my entire criminal organization is going to suffer for this i'm probably i'm definitely out of a job for sure kaido is firing me for sure no matter what happens after this and you're still coming up trying to kick me while i'm down i mean damn are you with me or what and so while you and your girl are arguing the crackhead shows up out of nowhere okay and you're just like god please okay don't transform into whatever that was before and he does immediately he starts bouncing all over the place and you're just like all right listen man i'm just gonna level with you you want the birdcage gone i'll drop it i'll end all of this right now just let me get away you'll never see me again how about that and that's when luffy's like come on man you've seen the godfather you knew there was only one way this was going to end and while you're sitting there broken and bloody you look off into the sunset and you are reminded of every horrible thing that you have ever done in your entire life the king that you made slaughter his own subjects, all of the toys that you made slaves to fund your criminal enterprise, Corazon, your own brother, your own father that you murdered, everything that you've ever done. You look off into the sunset, and then you look back at Luffy and you go, I'm going to jail, aren't I? And Luffy's like, I mean, if you survive this punch, yeah, probably. But if you're lucky, I might come visit you and impale down like I did Crocodile. God, please don't. But whatever, just do, just do what you gotta do. And Luffy jumps up into the air and he delivers you the hardest punch you have ever felt in your entire life. You get punched so hard, you go down into the depths of the earth. And that's the last thing you remember until you wake up behind bars inside of a jail cell on a ship headed towards Impel Down. It's over. And one day, a crackhead has invaded your country, dethroned you, ruined your entire criminal organization, took your girl, and now you are going to jail. I think, honestly, that's a worse day than what Crocodile had. And, you know, I feel kind of bad for Doflamingo, if I'm being honest. Like, he deserved it. Don't get me wrong. He definitely deserved it. But for as good as his plan was, it shouldn't have ended like that. Like, that is just hilariously bad. But that's about it for this time, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being interested. And if you like this don't forget to check out my playlist the crackhead luffy playlist that we've got it's a bunch of other arcs and only more to come to be honest like we're gonna go through them all obviously thank you so much for humoring me with the other videos too um it means so much whenever you guys uh tell me what you think and whenever you like um just any videos that i do sucks that we don't have any chapter reviews to go through i really like talking to you guys about that but whatever i'm not gonna drag this out you guys are awesome and i can't wait to see you in the next one